Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. I hope you're enjoying your day. Thank you for joining me. Here's an update what's going on with Yellowstone Super Volcano. As you may already know, there was a magnitude 6.1, I believe it was, earthquake up there along the Aleutian Islands of Alaska. And this is the effect of that earthquake there at Madison River. Yeah, it made the earth ring like a bell. Uh, look here how it kind of tapered off and then boom, it shook again. And boom, we got another shaker right there at 8.43 Universal Time. This is when the wave finally came into Yellowstone a few moments later. And then we got some other shakers going on. Uh, the brighter the color going towards red means hotter the ground is. Let me go back here and show you this. Yeah, we got several lines of melt. And remember, those of you that follow me, um, the pockets of rock, which is called melt under the ground, uh, not all rock melts at the same color, but hotter the red, um, the more melt is occurring. Yeah, let's look at the signature, and this is what it was showing when I pulled the file. Earlier, there was this earthquake right there, and that was at 21, oh, between 45 and 46. On this map today, produced by USGS, they are listing 58 earthquakes within the last week. One that I think is important, here we have Yellowstone Lake, and we got the Sour Creek Research and Dome. And I marked that in red, and it's really small. It was only a magnitude 0.5. But it could have been as large as a 0 0.95. That one was on the 22nd of last week. Now they reported it as a 0 0.5. Here we got 0 0.43 minus 0 0.3. This is the Upper Falls. This is Norris Junction area. But at Mary Lake, and I've talked about Mary Lake, it registered as a 9, a 0 0.95. So where is Mary Lake? Here we have Upper Falls right there. And let's go to its location. All right, right there. To the left, the top left, northwest of Yellowstone Lake. And here we got one of the two resurgent domes of the caldera there at Yellowstone. Between here and here, the ground is uplifting. Over the years, it has uplifted three feet, four inches between here and here. You can kind of draw an oblong um, image of that in your mind. Now that was between 1923 and 1985. I'll give you um, a link to that research paper where I found the data, but I found some other interesting information too about this Sour Creek Resurgent Dome. And I've talked about how the ground breathes up and down, up and down. Well, evidently, um, it has risen twice. The last time it's risen by the fishing bridge, which is near the outlet of the Yellowstone Lake to the Yellowstone River to the Missouri River. There has been two uplifts within, um, well, the last time was 3,000 years. And they had an uplift in this location of 26 feet. They also had uplift along the river here of 9 inches, almost 10 inches, 9.8 inches. What's happening with the Yellowstone River at the outlet? It's slowly straightening out the river and... Uh, much of this area has become flooded. And it's flooded in the past over here um, is areas where trees have died off because of the uplift that have happened in the past and killed off the trees. Just last year, I believe it was, they had to close off this bridge and do repairs. Well, there is a fault line. Yeah, it's called the uh, fishing bridge fault line. Let me bring it out. It's that white line. There you go. Can you see it? That white line. Going to the Madison River, Norris Junction area, this is the tilt meter. It's a borehole 
for the Norris Junction area. This, this is one of two boreholes, borehole 205. And I've talked about how the uh, Norris Junction area um, inflation has actually lately been going down. And this is the disk. They're also measuring strain, which way the fault line might be moving, etc. As I've stated before, each dot is an earthquake in the last seven days. If you look at the ground gazing out across the horizon, it would look like it's rising up in the west. And this is the last 30 days. When you see lots of dots here, that means the ground took a breath. And we'll come down to the disk. But under the ground, the magma is moving towards the east. The strain, the fault line, is going eastward. X is north, Y is east. Yeah, only one of five volcanoes that they're measuring what's going on under the ground. The other monitor they have for Norris Junction is also a borehole. A deep well under the ground, probably about 500 feet at least under the ground. Okay, top is north, bottom is east. Like I said, it was showing subsidence in the Norris Junction area. This is the last seven days, and we got a dot way over here. Now, at this monitor, I'm not quite exactly sure where it's at there at Norris Junction. But if you look at the horizon, it's rising in the east. But movement, the fault line, the magma is moving north. Whereas Norris Junction has been subsiding, the Madison River area has been rising. We've got a breath there, a breath there. This is the last seven days. Yeah, that's kind of a funny little signature of earthquakes there. And then the disc for the last seven days. Now it's kind of rising up uh, under the ground. The, the fault line, I should say, the magma, is moving probably a northeasterly direction. But the ground is moving, rising up, if you look out towards north. And then the last seven days. See how we have more of a significant rise in the ground? Yeah. Okay, and this is the last 30 days. Before I jump over to that area, I want to give a little bit more information about the uh, Sour Creek Resurgent Dome. It is affecting the ground all around this whole area. In fact, all the way going down to Yellowstone Lake. And as you know, uh, the Yellowstone Lake is tipping causing the land to rise up on one side and flood out on the other. There is a fault line that runs through Yellowstone Lake, kind of on the right side of Stevenson Island, and goes all the way across, and this is where we have the area of spreading. All right, here we have an area, the area of the Norris Geyser Basin. And let's go over to that other area of the uh, lower, I guess you can call it, the lower geyser basin where we have the other resurgent dome, which is the Mallard Lake resurgent dome. And we got a road that goes up through here. Yeah. And starting about two years ago, this is an area um, that started showing changes. They had new springs that um, erupted and the water temperatures um, increased. They had to close off part of the boardwalk, things like that. Now this area for some reason has been going down. We're going to go to the Madison River area now. All right, up over here. Now the south fork of the Madison River actually reversed its flow um, a long time ago because of the uplift of the caldera. This area has been rising. So we got let me pull this out. We got, yeah, North, uh, Norris Junction. And then up over here, we got the Madison River area. And there was a couple of earthquakes here, close to here, in the last uh, day or so. We had a, um, a minus 0 0.3. Now that was today on the 28th, um, seven kilometers in depth. And then a 0 0.5. Uh, uh, that was also today in this Madison area location. We also have, let me pull this up, um, on the 25th, another 0 0.5, a 1.1. 1 
that was on the 23rd. This is also the location of the earthquake. Um, the Hedge Bend Lake earthquake where all those people were killed. Also, uh, let's see, go down by Heart Lake because there was an earthquake down by Heart Lake. Let's see if it'll move for me. Typing in for the search. Right there, okay. Heart Lake, and there it is. A 1.1. Which was actually um, 4.2 kilometers in depth. And the name of that lake is uh, Shoshun Lake. It's a small earthquake. But what makes it significant is that when Yellowstone decided to unzip during its last major eruption. It did so by doing a counterclockwise unzipping. And then the two research and domes decided to collapse, which then caused the gigantic eruption 335,000 years ago. But as I've said before many times, there's been lots of smaller eruptions since then. The most recent was over here. Let me see if I can find it. Which was at Craters of the Moon. Um, that one, here we go, that one was just uh, 2,000 years ago. And then Hell's Half Acre uh, volcanic field along the Snake River Plateau, that I believe was about 12,000 years ago. And they've had quite a few hydrothermal eruptions. Um, example, that's how Mary's Bay was created by a hydrothermal eruption. Interestingly, that was about 12,000 years ago, the same time as the eruption at Hell's Half Acre. There's been smaller eruptions. Back in 2009, the Black Diamond Spring erupted. Um, there was some geologists there. I believe Bob Smith was there when um, that one erupted. Caught the geologists completely by surprise. Luckily, it was a very small eruption compared to some of the hydrothermal eruptions that have happened in the past and no one was hurt. So I thought it was interesting, though very small, a microquake, a 0 0.5 at the Mallard Lake Research and Dome. But because there's so much uplift between the two research and domes, here we got a 0 0.8. That was on um, the 18th of this month, and who knows how many other ones have happened that it I never caught. We got a 1.8. That was in March, on March 30th. But it just shows you that, it, you know, the ground is rising. That's why they're having earthquakes. The magma is on the move. So what are your thoughts? Please put your comments down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your support. Please stay safe. And I will talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.